Rishi, good to have you on E-Ink. No, good to be here. Thank you for having me. Before I even get into Scootsy, mm -hmm. let's uh, hear a little bit about your story. Because you've actually got a very interesting background uh, before you even, in fact, uh, came into this particular venture. Sure. You've been active in a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about you. Sure, but I think, uh, you know, I've uh, now been um, in many times, I feel like I'm the granddaddy of the space. <laughs> so I started off my first company in 97. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a digital media company called Urban Eye. Mm -hmm. uh, sold it to the Network 18 Group in 2006 and basically took on the role of CEO for, for the Web 18 division mm -hmm. of uh, Network 18. Ran the digital division for the Times Group for a bit. Mm -hmm. In about 2012, you know, the timing was right to start up all, all over again. And you know, uh, I think for me, the, one of the, the learnings was that to really succeed in, in a startup space, you have to unlearn a lot of things that happens in the corporate world. And there were people like me who were at the height of their career, mm. who wanted to start up, but you know, didn't have the risk appetite to do it because of various things. Mm. And um, if, if I could have created a common platform where I could bring these people together, uh, help with the execution. So uh, the first six months of, of our startup life was spent in creating almost like a Swiss army knife right. of technology so that technology doesn't take time. Uh, yeah. We then created a really interesting bench of entrepreneurs and you know mm -hmm. who, who came from different industries. So you come up with a new idea, you don't have to really like, scramble to find people to do it, you have it within the, okay. the, in the, okay. the platform. So this was at Anfa. This is Anfa. And uh, that's uh, of course um, your company where you've now got holdings in, in various different startups. Sure. So so Anfarm is um, started off by being a holding company mm. for interesting ideas. The biggest differentiator from say a typical incubator mm. accelerator in us is that we're a studio incubator. Okay. Um, we don't scout out for people with ideas. You know, most of our ideas are homegrown. And once we identify an idea, that's when we really hit the ground running. So tell us how Scootsy happened. Uh, uh, you came up with the idea, sure. I think. Um, perhaps having seen similar things in other markets or, or understanding that there was a need for it uh, here. Yeah. But how did you actually get into it? So I think when I started Anfarm, the goal was to actually work on multiple ideas at one point. And I realized that, you know, in, in the space and the day where we are, if you're not focusing on, on one or two projects, um, you're going to lose the, the entire game. So me uh, and my co-founder Sandeep Das, mm -hmm. you know, we were looking at, at this hyper-local space and we were looking at what was happening out there. And we felt there was an opportunity to create a single single app. Mm -hmm. yeah? If you look at your phone today, you know, you, you may have multiple pages uh, yeah. of apps that you've downloaded and tried, but the apps that you go back to are going to be the ones that are on your home screen. Mm -hmm. right? So you're fighting, you're scrambling for space on that home screen. Mm -hmm. And we said that if we can create a single app where you have the promise and you're able to deliver mm -hmm. uh, on the promise of getting something to someone instantly. Mm -hmm. So instant gratification is the differentiator. Mm -hmm. Then you can probably have multiple verticals, multiple categories that you put on and be the single app to deliver anything a person wants. When we looked at the space, you had food aggregators out there, right? right? And, um, but most of the food aggregators had taken a very different path. So they were aggregators at that point. Yeah. Um, that means the last mile, the logistics mm. was still managed by a restaurant. So once an order came in, it was passed on to a restaurant. Right. Um, now that is almost uh, like saying, you know, I'll take the order from you, but then post that, it's a black hole. Mm. So there's absolutely no control over the last mile experience. There's no visibility to yeah. the consumer. So the opportunity was to create a full stack company, okay. something that innovated on the discovery side of things, mm. where we understood who an individual was and were, were able to upsell them more. And then basically work with the restaurants to ensure that you know we were assisting with the way packaging is done, uh, food was deconstructed in a certain way, and then obviously the last mile where we reach out, we reach the product to the consumer mm -hmm. or the food to the consumer, and it comes to them intact. You know, hot food needs to be hot, cold food needs to be cold. Um, in the initial phase, you know, um, I think for us it was important to win the supply side, mm -hmm. and um, a, a lot of the fine dining restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, especially the ones you know where you have these Michelin hatted mm -hmm. chefs or these people who aspire to be Michelin hat chefs, the way food travels becomes an important part of it, right? You know, you when you're paying for top dollar mm -hmm. in a restaurant. Um, you're, you're paying for the presentation, you're paying for the ambience. And when you get it home, if there's, you know, if say the food spilled or, or it doesn't taste the yeah. same, you're going to think that it's the restaurant's quality that suffers. So for, the, for a lot of the chefs, 
the pain point was we can't work with the with the regular aggregators because they don't understand how food should travel so for us the initial phase was yeah. getting food to be transported the right way and um, getting the supply side right by working with these high end chefs and dine in restaurants that hadn't explored dine out as an option right. so far so does that mean your clientele also varies from some of the other aggregators yeah and, and i think you know it's tough to be mm. that one app for everyone yeah. you know i think you can be one app for everything mm. but uh, you know the the way your messaging is the tonality of it the way the app looks the kind of um, the listings you have mm. so for us we took a very conscious call to say let's take quality versus quantity okay. yeah okay. and uh, so on the demand side and this is why you know when we got the supply side right a lot of these restaurants tend to have their own own clientele that gravitate towards the brand yeah. um so for us we said while we we are while we can reach out to this audience you know a lot of the brands that we partnered with were marketing our brand in the initial phase okay. um and so today you know our, our clientele ranges from celebrities to industrialists to yeah. regular people like me and and i think um, we've got a, a fair mix of everyone um in um if you if you were to take um mumbai and take south mumbai to bandra mm. you know i think we've got the the most diverse and and most interesting set of people that you would never imagine would even you know start up an app and and use our platform they'd ordering from us a couple of times a day so a lot of questions uh, as always about right. a startup that's managing to contain itself rather than trying to yeah. expand at a at, at sure. a super rapid pace mm-hmm. um how do you respond to that You know, I think scale as a word is overrated. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's it's a tool that a lot of investors use to figure out, you know, whether they're going to invest in a company or not. Um, scale is something you achieve post having your basic standard operating processes and mm. procedures in place. And a lot of companies today have scaled prematurely. Okay. That means you get if you raise money quickly, you're expected to. The benchmark is valuation mm. rather than profitability or getting your you can unit economics right or getting your advantage, sustainable advantage right. Mm. So we always felt that with 22 million people mm. in just Mumbai, this is a large enough market itself, right? And if we can build a sustainable advantage in this city, mm. that means become Mumbai's only app or Mumbai Acres app. Uh, by um having anchor brands in every category that we have uh, there's value enough to be unlocked from the city right, right? right. Uh, even if you're looking at 10% of that that's about 2 million yeah. addressable market size yeah. um and uh, i think now that we've reached a certain mm-hmm. certain um uh, stage uh we are looking at expansion but yeah. we're going to do it again in a very staggered manner right. um our our plan for the next city is to actually have a local CEO out there too mm-hmm. who gets the market has the right connections is able to make it the city's app okay. you know it has to be the city's app we're not going to take a one size mm-hmm. fits all approach to to launching in in other markets what would be the next city um we are looking at delhi as the next city and we're looking at dubai as the next the dubai, city dubai so you're yeah. planning already yeah. to go yeah, uh, abroad jump the pond i think <laughs> the, the the market option it is um pretty incredible we have um we're in the works of signing with uh, a large local player out there okay that would help us with our local presence and whatever else we're doing we have an app today where people came in um for food and are now using it for everything from uh, getting organic vegetables to getting the fish or the meat from a butcher shop yeah. to even organic milk so how much is food still as an overall percentage um when we first started mm-hmm. uh, the mix was 80 20 yeah. today we're in about 65 35 okay. uh at a steady state we expect food to still be 50% okay. of our overall yeah. uh mix um food is by its nature you know mm-hmm. you you're used to ordering something on demand yeah. right and and you know the aggregators that have been there for the longest time or even you know say the pizza delivery companies yeah. they used to picking up the phone or, or placing an order mm-hmm. through the app and it comes to you so there's no behavior change required with a lot of the other categories so getting a book or yeah. you know buying a toy or getting a dress in time for for the weekend it requires a behavior change yeah. a consumer doesn't know how good it is to have it instantly because yeah. they haven't sampled it as yet and the fact that we're able to now build um on our catalog across various um say verticals and in each of them have anchor brands mm-hmm. that people would normally buy 
uh, I think we're seeing more and more people saying, wow, you know, now that I've, I've actually bought something and I've got it and uh, I can't go back to my traditional way of shopping. Okay. So I think while food started off with it being the low hanging fruit, mm. um, we definitely feel that each category is ripe for disruption and um, um, examples mm. are in the West. If you look at Amazon Prime, mm. which, is, yeah, which is which is same day delivery, you know, yeah, it's just something and, 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 and people can't live without that. So our goal from the get go was, you know, if mm. online is cannibalizing, Hmm. A lot of the small retailers, a lot of the small medium businesses, then the only way they can kind of be at an advantage yeah. is by reaching out the consumer base that's nearest them and shortening the gap from, you know, from desire yeah. to delivery, yeah. which is what we do. All right, on that note, let's take a very quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll dig in a little bit uh, into the back end, how it all works, how Scootsy manages uh, its efficiencies. Back with that in just a moment. Let's talk about the back end sure. uh, because you've actually invested in your own fleet as opposed to right. some of the others. Yeah. How does that work in terms of, you know, A, of course, investment sure. and, and B, just, just purely on a logistics basis? You know, while we're not a logistics company, we yeah. knew logistics had to be the backbone of whatever we're doing. Yeah. And uh, for us, innovation around logistics has been something that we've focused on from the get-go. If you look at our offering today, mm -hmm. uh, we have the widest delivery uh, air radius. Yeah. So uh, while a regular hyperlocal company would probably do a 3km or 4km mm -hmm. radius, we get you food on a 12km radius. That means okay. if there's a restaurant that you like, say in say uh, Kulaba, we'll actually deliver it to you all the way out here in Worli, right? Okay. So help me visualize this. If I yeah. put in an order with Scootsy, right. is there like a gentleman on a bike somewhere? <laughs> Okay. Waiting so, to, so, so is you, there a center that's that's going to pick yeah, that up? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so the minute you place your order on yeah. on the app, you know that's when the magic starts. Yeah. If you're a regular customer, mm. you're auto uh, confirmed. If okay. it's your first time experience, then we tend to call yeah. you to confirm your address and and various other things. Our goal is to not call you ever again mm. to find out where you live. Okay. Right. The order is then gone. It goes into the background okay. uh, and into the back end where it's allocated uh, using an automated system okay. that. Um, allocates it to the nearest rider okay. that will be available post a prep time. So there's not like some garage or warehouse that these riders need to be, they're kind of no, floating? No, so, so, so uh, we actually um, have historic yeah. information on uh, on timings uh, and um, say order history etc. Mm. So we have almost like a heat map of when orders are going to be at, uh, are going to spike. So we've actually got hubs, we yeah. do have hubs. The hubs are largely for for collection of cash, you okay. know, because if riders are collecting cash, they yeah. need to kind of deposit us. Yeah, but otherwise, you know, we have people on the street, mm. um, and they have allocated oh, cool. locations, yeah. <laughs> so that they know that yeah. you know, yeah, say there's a restaurant that gets a spike of like yeah. 30, 40 orders at a certain time, especially during mm. dinner, they need to be close by, and uh, we we take in different prep times. Okay. So certain restaurants, especially the QSRs, don't need more than five, mm. ten minutes to to prep food. Sure. But the minute you go to a fine dining restaurant you know it ranges from 20 minutes to 35 minutes okay. and especially if you're talking about a restaurant mm -hmm. that has um, you know a, a huge inflow of dine-in customers yeah. on the weekends that tends to happen now at that time the challenge is you know we can't drop our promise of delivering right. in 60 minutes right. and the consumer you know is unforgiving so we ensure that where there's an expediter mm -hmm. at most of the high-end restaurants that is closely tied into us okay. um, the minute the food's picked up you know a rider is there and then he has the best route to the consumer okay. um, a typical transit time because it's bikes mm -hmm. regardless of how tra how much traffic it is is about 20 minutes to 25 minutes okay. yeah. so when you started i mean what's the kind of investment that you put in you also um picked up from where meals and wheels left off sure. so you had at least an existing base uh, right. you know to start off with yeah i mean how much have you um, added to that what's sure. the kind of metrics you're looking at now right. um you know will the scale that that will naturally come even right. if it's not something you're pushing no, yeah. need additional funding yeah it does you know um and um, has mm -hmm. adequate funding yeah. at the holding co level but we still are we, we drip feed our businesses as and when they required right okay. so the meals and meals acquisition um was great for us to understand mm -hmm. how technology can really change the whole logistics space and and how we can improve efficiencies mm -hmm. 
but when we acquired Meals and Wheels, they had 17 riders, okay. right? We're we're close to 500 riders today. So you know, there's been a sea change in various things. Yeah. Um, and the goal was, you know, obviously with the relationships that he had cultivated over a period of time, uh, capitalize on that. Can you show additional value? Can you understand what was not working for that business? So even though, you know, it was a business that had been in the space for the long period yeah. of time, I think technology wasn't something that ever adapted or adopted mm -hmm. to take that the next leap. And I think that was yeah. the whole motivation mm -hmm. to actually go out and get Sunil on board. Uh, Sunil is the co-founder of Meals and Wheels. He's done a great yeah. job of building that brand. You know, I think the consumer needed a younger, peppier mm -hmm. brand. The and name, that image comes that through. That image comes think, through yeah. with, with the word yeah. Scootsie. Yeah. Um, we wanted, uh, like I said, food had to be the first category because that's where the opportunity yeah. was. So it was interesting. I think, um, you know, a lot of things we have done today or we haven't done today are learnings from that acquisition. Right. So, you know, I think it was probably a really sound uh, mm -hmm. acquisition. It helped us get off the yeah. ground faster and it helped us, you know, be in the radar of customers, like you said, who, who've been using the app for the longest mm -hmm. time, who welcomed the change when we moved to Scootsy. I was just trying to understand how, how much investment a business like this would take. You know, so um, it depends on how you build a business. Right. If, you, if you're going to build a business and um, come out all guns blazing with marketing and, and above the line marketing, um, you're going to probably burn a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a few things right. We said we're not going to ever discount. So we're, we're never going to be an app that gives you food um, at a certain price that's less than what you can pay in a restaurant yeah. because then you're going to keep feeding that, right? There's so many people constantly wonder how you make money when I, I order a Starbucks coffee and yeah. it's 150 bucks. Right. Um, the, the margins, I mean... Are, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so you need to look at it from, uh, yeah. and it's something we call lifetime value of mm -hmm. a customer, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, for us, we dropped the minimum order price. Yeah. Um, initially, when we first acquired Meals Meals, it was a 500 rupee minimum order. And we said, okay, let's drop the minimum order price. Yeah. And not because it's not working, it's because when you create these false barrier to entry, mm -hmm. people tend to switch off and say, I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah. even though I would probably spend more than that. So on the day we dropped it, we, we saw a spike of 2x in orders. Wow. But what happened was yeah. the average order value did not drop. Okay. Right? Okay. So that's the, interesting. So it's a mindset. It's a mindset. So, and, yeah. and I think yeah. putting things like delivery fees and putting stuff like minimum orders mm. are a barrier to people who are anyway spent. They just yeah. don't like to, to have conditions, preconditions mm. to what they're doing. And also, I think for us, we've seen that while you may order a Starbucks coffee, you'll follow it up, you know, in the same day by ordering mm. a thousand rupee meal. Okay. Uh, today, um, why our unit economics work for us is because of the quality of our supply yeah. and the quality of our audience, right? So our average order value is 900 rupees. Mm. Um, the competition is somewhere in the 300 to okay. 350 range. Okay. So we are at 900 and we're, we're constantly working and keeping it there. Okay. Um, our take rate is highest in the industry. Mm. And we've been growing organically at a 30% month on month rate. Okay. So for us, I think one of the, mm. when we were looking at marketing this or getting ourselves in, into yeah. uh, becoming a, a more of a regular use app, we said, how do we kind of break through the clutter mm. that was out there? And, and so it was interestingly by uh, our riders wearing orange pants and having these really cool orange helmets that, yeah. that were driving around the street yeah. in the initial, initial few months, even yeah. if they didn't have anything to, to, to deliver, they were very visible. Okay. Um, it was our brand associations. It was the fact that a lot of our partners actually looked at this as a symbiotic relationship. Okay. And I think even today, our brands, uh, our restaurant partners, etc., mm -hmm. they come to us constantly and say, hey, how do we work together to improve both you know, our offering on, on your platform? So let's kind of uh, collaborate and create things that are off the menu. Okay. Today, on an everyday basis, we do above two, two and a half thousand. Okay. And on the weekends, we do 3,000 okay. right, orders. Mm -hmm. At 900 rupees ticket mm -hmm. size, that would mean someone else would have to do at their 350, 9,000 orders, right? Yeah. In terms of revenue, we, I would say we're the largest in Mumbai. Okay. We are. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this is something that all our partners validate. Okay. Um, in the areas that we mm -hmm. operate, we have, we're far ahead of well-entrenched established players. We're the only app that has a pre-order functionality, right? The only one out yeah. there. Most of the yeah. other logistics players have no option but to do an on-demand delivery. That mm -hmm. means 
the order is placed and then you have a certain time when you have to react and deliver it. Because we have a pre-order functionality, we're able to plan our logistics in very different ways. You know, we have the on-demand, we have the predictive on-demand, which is based on, you know, your, your pre-orders, etc. Mm. And then we have something called the milk run. Okay. Milk run is where I have a path. Yeah. I know exactly when or if something needs to be picked up and when it needs to be dropped off. So my efficiencies per rider go up okay. significantly. You know, single rider can deliver three packages. Mm. So my margins, right. my potential for revenue right. goes up three times right. with the same kind of cost. Right. We're in conversation with Rishi Kiani, finding out all about uh, Scootsy and its journey so far. We'll be back in just a moment. When you were talking about technology, how does that apply? I mean, what, what exactly um, does that entail in terms of having a platform or tools ready for all kinds of uh, eventualities? This comes from mm. years of kind of experience yeah. Yeah. where we've, we've had a great idea mm. and we've been at the drawing room for months and we said, okay, this is finally the idea that mm. we want to do. And then technology always is the yeah. bottleneck because you need to then spend some time specking it out and getting the right mm. tech people in place and then building it out. But when you, if you were to look at it, the modules are very similar, okay. right? So you'll always have an e-commerce engine, you'll always have a templating engine, you'll always have something that requires mm -hmm. some sort of pingbacks for, for logistics, mm -hmm. you'll require some sort of you know, delivery tracking, you'll require something in terms of content publishing. Right. So the requirements are all similar. So we say let's mod make it a module, right? Let's, let's take each of these modules and create it for a, being adaptable okay. to whatever design. Okay. So when you come up with an idea, mm -hmm. you know, typically your gestation period, your the period of yeah. execution can last from anywhere from a couple of months to six months, right? right? Uh, we can actually launch an idea in 21 days. Mm -hmm. So, wow. yeah. So speed of market, speed to execution is going to be the game changer. Okay. For us, capital can never be a disruptor. Okay. Yeah, we lose the battle because the way our DNA is, the way our, our people are, if capital is a disruptor, we're building the wrong product, right? For us, innovation has to be the disruptor. All right, so I mean, exciting times at Scootsy. And is this then the main project you're focusing on right now at Ant Farm? Is it taking up most <clears> of the time? This is my, you know, my, I, I'm, yeah, yeah. my baby and, and I'm running it with Sandeep Das. Yeah. This is what I go to sleep and think about. Right. This is what I wake up and I'm thinking about. Nice. Um, it's important to have a singular focus. So talk to us about when you see profits coming in, because you, you've been very, strong on organic growth for us look we're not chasing complete profitability mm -hmm. at the at this stage at, you're know, still at the company but yeah. that said at the hub level mm -hmm. so in three hubs that we yeah. operate we actually break even okay what's the kind of roi you're expecting on this business so we're not driven by i still uh, have to ask you, you, you <laughs> yeah so, 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 you know i i think um you're, you're in a market where your typical roi yeah. doesn't always come from exits right true and yeah. i think the uh, we're at a very decent mm. side or stage of, say, returns for investors yeah. in, in many cases. Um, you're at a stage where a lot of companies today are consolidating, mm. you know, they're consolidating, they're doing a down round. Yeah. Um, so for us, I think there's a long view. Okay. Um, this is a business that has to sustain itself. Mm. Uh, profitability, you know, if we're doing 15,000 orders yeah. uh, a day, which is the near term goal, mm. you're suddenly talking about 45 crores a month. Right, so that's a sizable number. Yeah. So in our own business, we see us hitting about a 4,000 uh, GMV by next year, wow. which is a fairly large number. Yeah. Um, and um, we're constantly working on improving our gross margin. Okay. Um, so while we start with obviously the traditional business, which is the commission mm -hmm. business, today we're incubating a lot of small medium businesses onto our platform. Okay. We're enabling them. Right. Uh, and because of that, our margins improve. Okay. We're also uh, co-creating virtual brands with restaurants okay. that are exclusive on our platform, okay. where again, the JME goes higher. This is a business, according to me, that in the long run, you know, has an opportunity of, of, of being a market leader. E-commerce. Your, your regular e-commerce is also ripe for disruption. You know, I mean, if I get a book in, in 30 minutes to an hour, why would I go with a two-day delivery time? We've, we're running um, now something for the new Harry Potter book. Okay. You know, that's just yeah, that's yeah. coming out. And there are people who don't even want to wait a day for the book. 
So while you have your Amazons and all that that do have the listing, the delivery will happen on the second or the fourth. Yeah. So this is an opportunity for us to get you the book. So we we actually we we have a sign up on our on right. our app, and we can get you the book right from midnight of the of thirtieth, <laughs> uh, so thirty first early morning, yeah. right up to twelve o'clock in the noon. Oh, and cool. we've got yeah. thousands <laughs> of sign ups, and you know it's a great way to showcase. the the whole yeah. notion of instant gratification how we can get it for you and even ours matter fantastic rishi great speaking to you today Thank thanks you. so much for joining thanks us thanks so much